As you guys know, the first atom bomb that was used in war was on August 6, 1945 in Hiroshima. This bomb was so new that the Japanese didn't believe what hit them. They said this was a natural disaster. The US said this wasn't a natural disaster, it was a bomb and you should surrender. But the Japanese denied and said no. Then the Americans said, if you want to count it as a disaster, we're going to send one more your way. Three days later, the second bomb hit Nagasaki. Around 300,000 people died in Hiroshima and around 165,000 died in Nagasaki. And after these two atomic bombs, the Japanese finally surrendered. But this video is not about the war. In this video, we want to talk about the Manhattan Project. The project that basically created the atomic bomb. When these two atomic bombs exploded, not only were the Japanese surprised, but the whole world, even the United States was surprised because they were shocked themselves that a bomb this small could cause this much destruction. Thankfully, these two bombs were the last ones to explode in war and they were never used in another war. Where did the idea of this bomb come from? A lot of people believe that the US came up with the idea. But no, it was Nazi Germany that came up with the idea, especially these three German scientists, Otto Hahn, Leis Meitner, and Fritz Strassmann. If you want to put it in simple terms, these three figured out it's possible to split the atom. This might seem simple, but it's a very complicated task, especially for that time. In Nazi Germany, Anywhere there was innovation, they immediately went towards weaponizing it. And that is why when they realized you could split the atom, they came up with the idea of a bomb. The information about this was leaked towards the world and the Americans heard about it. Franklin D. Roosevelt set up a meeting and he said we need a team to create this bomb before the Germans. Around this time, an Italian scientist by the name of Enrico Fermi realized that you could use uranium to make this bomb more deadly. You could say around this time, most powerful countries were trying to build this bomb. It wasn't only the US, Nazi Germany and the Soviets. Most European countries were looking for it, especially the United Kingdom. And when they realized the Nazis were close to it, they teamed up with the US and they tried to work together to figure it out. When the US government realized other people are trying to get this as well, started the project and he made Robert Oppenheimer the director of it. Robert Oppenheimer has a nickname as well. They call him father of the atomic bomb. A lot of people worked on this project to get this bomb. But Oppenheimer was the lead director. When the US started this project, they gave it a name, the Manhattan Project. As we said, the US realized that the Nazis are close and that is why they put a lot of pressure to the team to create it quicker and they tried to create fear for the workers to hurry it up. And if the Nazis created it, you know what will happen, right? First one hits London, second one Moscow and third one somewhere in the US like New York. This pressure by the US government to the people working on the Manhattan Project made 130,000 people work on it. And at that time, it cost them around $2 billion, which is $25 billion in today's money. Eventually, the bomb was created and the first one was blown up in Hiroshima. A B-29 bomber took this bomb into the skies of Hiroshima and dropped it with a parachute. And before it hit the ground at the height of 200 meters, they turned the switch on.
When a bomb is exploded at this height, it does a lot more damage. If it explodes on the ground, most of the explosive power goes into the ground. This explosion created a mushroom cloud that had three and a half kilometers in height. And the temperature around the mushroom cloud was about 4,000 degrees Celsius. As you know, the Nazis were defeated before the US tested the atomic bomb and they were never able to create it. But as you know, the Japan was still running and they kept attacking the US in the Pacific Ocean. So how was the Manhattan Project successful? This project and all the money the US spent, they were able to figure out how to get plutonium in 1942. And after that, they created another invention. For the first time, they made a centrifuge. And with this tool, they were able to get uranium-235. In the beginning of 1945, the Manhattan Project was successful. When the bomb was ready, Germany was already pretty much defeated and every battle was being lost. And that is why the US never decided to use the bomb on Germany. Because three months later, on April 1945, Germany had fallen. But the bomb is ready and Japan won't surrender. On July 16, 1945, the US tests the first atomic bomb in the state of New Mexico. And at that time, they didn't know how dangerous the radiation is from these bombs. That is why they tested it anywhere. When the US tested the bomb, they felt powerful. And they sent a message, if you don't surrender, you'll receive a gift. The Japanese replied and pretty much said shut up. After the US received that, they knew what to do. And just like we said, on August 6, 1945, this bomb exploded at a height of 200 meters in Hiroshima. Just like we said, after the first bomb, the Japanese didn't surrender and they didn't believe the US did it. You guys know, three days later, the same thing happened. And after the second explosion, the Manhattan Project was finished. But the US realized there's a new enemy in town, and that's the Soviet Union. And that is why another project with an unknown name was opened again. After these two explosions, it kind of closed the doors to these bombs because they realized this is no joke. And they kind of wanted it just to intimidate other countries. A lot of people believe that these bombs should not be created. But a lot of other people say no. If they weren't created, anyone would just start a world war. And we will be by number 12 right now. But let's hear from Robert Oppenheimer, the director of the Manhattan Project. But it seems like he was not happy about the success of the project and he was kind of regretting it. He was a chain smoker and all the things he said were anti-war and anti-weapon. One of the most interesting and famous lines he said is this. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. In the end, cigarettes ended his life, and in the year 1962, because of throat cancer, he passes away. It's good to know that in the year 2023, Oppenheimer's movie will be coming out, and it might be interesting.